Welcome back to my channel. I am your favorite mother of three bougie vintage and today's video is part seven of the Tasmanian Devil series. We are almost ready to wrap the series up girl. Before I get into this part, I must say that when I was reflecting on this a couple days ago, I cried a bit because it was really painful and what I'm realizing now is traumatic experience for me, you know, and it really wasn't funny when I was going through it. I know I've been making light of it now, but it wasn't funny when I was going through it. This part and the next part are where you get to see just how painful it was. Just like in previous parts before I get started, there's just some questions that I wanted to answer. One question, which I already answered in the comment section, was why are we two adults using my mom's credit card? I'm an authorized user, thank you very much. Free game, if you're your parent or somebody close to you that trusts you has excellent credit if they add you as an authorized user it helps your credit score okay we's in the 800 so thanks for inquiring but I am an authorized user my sister was however not an authorized user on the card so me personally I use my mom's card because then my cards can stay pretty much always paid off and then my mom's card is the one that I usually have going in rotation but since I'm an authorized user on there it boosts my credit score as well that was one of the questions the other comment I saw that I thought was interesting was somebody said that me and my sister were doing the same thing like where the kids were starting buying them stuff but it really wasn't the same because my kids well this is their house and they had their toys here before my sister's kids got here and then of course when my sister got here she also bought a bunch of toys too but they brought toys and the difference between my kids and her kids were that if my kids wanted to play with her kid stuff they weren't allowed to so that's why I ended up buying stuff not because my kids wouldn't share her kids especially her son he would bite and fight and he was getting pretty solid once he moved here he came here very skinny and left here pretty like chunky like kid chunky he was really really strong and I have little girls and he's obviously much stronger than they are and also aggressive because emotions are harder to manage when you have autism so because he would bite and stuff I had to get my kids the stuff that I was getting them um, because he wouldn't share and his mom didn't force him to share either whereas with me I will share my kids will share their stuff you know what I mean so that was really the difference my kids ask for the stuff versus her kids are not asking for things because again they are nonverbal so they weren't asking for things my sister was going out of her way to purchase anything that she saw that we had it was unnecessary because we already had a lot of stuff here and my kids were sharing the stuff and also she wasn't using her own money so that was the other part of it too so I hope that answers your question uh, <laughs> but yeah other than that let's jump right on into part six because because this is going to be a while. So boom. <laughs> so boom. My mama gets declined at the store. She's embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for her. And right away, I knew what it was. And I said it to my sister. And the look on her face was like, oh yeah, maybe that's what happened. And I was just like, girl, you knew. So I had been using my mom's card for years. Like I've been an authorized user on there for a long time. It's been, I think, five years now. And and she's never gotten flagged from her uh, credit card company. She's never been declined. So this was a big deal. As you can imagine, she came home, P.I. crooked letter, crooked letter, E.D. Okay, she was pissed. And rightfully so, because if you know you got money and you go and you swipe your card and they tell you, uh, decline, ma'am, would you like to try another card? <laughs> You're gonna be pissed too. At this point, my mom is still pretty much oblivious, but she's catching on that she's in hot water but she's not sure about just how much hot water she's in. So at this point, she's about to find out. But before we get into that, I want to take you on the reign of terror or the beginning of the reign of terror of my sister, the Tasmanian devil. So after my sister got rid of Richard, <laughs> it was time to put Operation cancel bougie in motion. And once she got started with her plan, won't nobody be able to stop her except for God himself. If you recall in the earlier parts, I mentioned something called mommy day. And on mommy day, we would go out together and go shopping and do stuff together. And 
then you know she re reiterated the fact that Wednesdays were mommy day and then I slowly started opting out because it got old real quick and I don't need to go out shopping every single week for nothing so I was pretty much like I gotta get to I gotta work you know I gotta get back to work so that's what I did this is pretty much where mommy day got used against me and this is where I was gaslit for the first time so the first time that I started to regret and I do not use this word lightly, I was very regretful of inviting her over to not only visit, but to also live. One day we were in the basement. My sister had called a house meeting. <laughs> with myself, my mother, and her, right? The three of us. We're in the basement, all the kids are in the basement running around playing. And at this point, I am not pregnant anymore, so I've had the baby. And my sister is pretty much gearing up to tell me about Mommy Day. Only, it's not Mommy Day. My sister goes on to say that she's gonna be using Wednesdays as her work day. Obviously, right away, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? When, what are you talking about? I work from home, you have a full salary, you don't have work. <laughs> what are you talking about, your work day? I'm confused, as you can imagine. At that point, I had been working five days a week and taking two days off. Those two days off, which I mentioned previously, my mom also got off and my ex-husband was off on those days as well. That was just my work schedule. My sister, who just got here, started telling me that I'm now gonna be working four days a week because she's gonna be taking one of my work days for herself unnecessarily and that I will now be off three days. So I'm working four days, I'm off three days, she has one day. That was obviously not okay with me because, I'm sorry Christopher Columbus, who the hell do you think you are coming up here and reclaiming territory or claiming territory that you should not be claiming? What is happening? I am confused, I'm like, Of course, those things were not discussed prior to her moving in. That was done on purpose. Um, when I invited her to move in, I did not think that my work schedule would be affected at all, because why should it be? So obviously I am like, my guard is completely up now because I'm like, what the hell? What's she talking about? I'm gonna be working four days, she gonna have one day. What is going on here, you know? And not only that, she was guaranteed three more years of income and not having to go to work, full salary. So I'm like, baby, why are you trying to take away one of my work days? I don't make any money if I don't work. Like, what do you, like, what? Like, I'm literally sat there puzzled. I'm sat there and I'm trying to figure out why a stay-at-home mom that gets a full salary, not a lot of people get to do that, that has two autistic children, wants to infiltrate and take away one of my work days. Like, I would be ecstatic and elated that I get to stay home and take care of my babies, especially if they're special needs. Like, that is such a blessing. And my mom and I were there when the conversation was had, when the people guaranteed her her three more years. We were there when that phone call came in and we were like, oh my God, you're so blessed. Like, and we thought she knew how blessed she was, girl. She did not know. And if she didn't know, she didn't care. Now, at that time, I was a one woman show. Right now, I'm not, shout out to Jalen. I was a one-woman show. That means I, do, I did everything by myself. So I was working in the mornings to the evening time. Then I would be a mother, okay? And actually during my work hours, I was also mothering, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, then I'd be a mom, I put my kids to sleep. Then I would stay up and edit whatever I filmed or whatever I was working on. I would do it at nighttime after I put my kids to sleep. And then I'd wake up the next day and do the same thing. That was my life. I also had a newborn, so a lot was going on and I just couldn't understand why my sister was trying to change things so obviously the resistance was a lot because I was sat in that basement stuck okay you would have thought somebody gave me some crystal damn meth because I was stuck okay I could not do anything I was like what the hell what perplexed so when we're in the basement and I'm like to her what are you talking about you're working on Wednesdays like working what do you what you know what she said to me? Well, I always said mommy days was Wednesday, so I don't know why you're acting all surprised now. Girl, I could have fallen out. I could have fallen out. That was the gaslight. That was the first time that she gaslit me and I was like, it was giving Scooby-Doo. What the hell she just say to me? I was like, what? I thought mommy days was something that we did together as sisters. I didn't know mommy days was you taking over my work life. 
stunned. I was like, whoa. Like I was actually, if you look up taking a bat in the dictionary, that was me, okay? Cause I was literally sat there like, whoa, I'm not hearing correctly. If I didn't have to conclude this in one more part, I would have left y'all right there at a cliffhanger. <laughs> Got <laughs> But obviously I'm not gonna do that to you today. So yeah, she was sat there gaslighting me in front of my mom. I was actually really too stunned to speak. It was not a meme. It was my real life. I couldn't say anything. I was I was I was shocked and instantly filled with regret. I was like, whoa, like what did I get myself into? And just in case you're lost, this is all happening before mom's card got declined, okay? So we are pretty much doing a flashback right now and then we're gonna get back into the card declining. Anyway, at this point, mama is blind, okay? My mom does not see. She is legally blind, she cannot see, okay? She doesn't realize what's going on. The other part of this was that my mom was struggling to run a five children daycare with the newborn, obviously. So it was her two kids, my two older kids, and the newborn. Initially, we didn't know, or I didn't know, that my mom was ever gonna have trouble running running the daycare because originally it had just been my two children and then obviously my third baby was coming and my sister's kids were never really a part of the equation because they didn't live in Ottawa but now that they were here and my mom was getting to experience that you know she realized oh this is a little much for me I, I can't handle I can't manage it's a lot for me to handle all five kids my mom is in her 60s like you know she has her health issues it's too much not to mention my sister's children are special needs so it's a lot for somebody that doesn't even have the um, skill set to handle special needs children or autistic children to deal with them full-time in daycare the other part of that too was that my sister's children were so stuck to my sister they were very much clinging to her all the time especially her daughter the baby she was always clinging to her and they were very much needy like they need their mom all the time and so they weren't really even trying to be in my mom's care <laughs> They were putting up resistance at first as well because it was a lot for them to handle as well. My mom was confused by me and I was like looking at her crazy because she was confused as to why I couldn't give up one day a week. And I'm like, why does nobody listening to, like why is nobody hearing me? I work from home. She has a salary. She gets paid. If she wants to stay home and pick her bum all day, she's getting paid. If I stay home and pick my bum all day, I ain't getting paid. So it's apples and oranges, plums and pears. It's not given. So I cannot not be working. I cannot give up one of my work days. It wasn't discussed prior. She didn't say, hey, if I move in, are you willing to give up one of your work days if I'm paying half the rent or blah, blah, blah. That wasn't discussed. So we're not gonna spring it on me after the fact. You could go, sister. <laughs> Cause we're not doing that, or are we? Long story short, I was picking and choosing my battles very wisely and as much as I was fuming I flexed and I gave her the one day a week only I said I'm not gonna give up the middle of the week that doesn't make any sense so you can have Fridays and so we switched mommy day to Friday the first few mom mommy days homegirl wasn't doing no work she was sat in her room playing video games I pledge allegiance to the flag sat in her room playing video games the whole damn day while my mom was watching her kids in her other room. So, oh, that's another thing. So my sister had uh, two full bedrooms, obviously access to the whole house, but she had two full bedrooms, a full bath, and a driveway space. Like she had everything that was included in the house that I have, um, but she had two bedrooms and my family had two bedrooms. The bed, uh, and then my mom has her own suite. That being said, like I said, I gave her Fridays because I didn't feel like I had a choice in the matter and my mom was not disagreeing that I shouldn't give her one of my work days and I'm like what <laughs> girl as perplexed so we get into the swing of things and sure enough I get used to this one day a week thing I get used to working four days instead of five and taking off three days of course that didn't last long after I don't know a week and a half two weeks of the new schedule and me getting comfortable I should have known not to get comfortable every time I get comfortable the devil comes in and tries to stir up some mess so I get comfortable I'm in the swing of things and I don't mind working four days a week and taking off three days I don't mind it this lady, my sister, 
comes in again, calls another meeting. She tried to make this whole thing very corporate. Like every week we were having meetings, like who's taking the minutes at this point? Cause it's giving corporate staff, it's giving the office. <laughs> And somebody needs to be taking the minutes because at this next meeting, this is when I really wanted to just scream. I wanted to fight. Death to all of them. I wanted to get violent, girl. I was getting mad, okay? So at this meeting, my regret that I was initially feeling was pretty much about to turn into the biggest anxiety and panic attack to date, okay? My chest was so tight and the overwhelming feeling I got was overwhelming. <laughs> That's really the only way I can describe it. I was beyond overwhelmed, you know? I could barely breathe. So in this meeting in particular, my sister sits myself and my mom down again and she says, so I'm gonna be taking Fridays and Saturdays. I said, bitch, stop it. I said, how is this girl coming into my home? I'm gonna cry right now. How is she, because this was so traumatic. Like, I don't think you guys understand. I know it sounds petty, but it's really not. How is somebody that I moved into my home telling me that they're going to be taking another work day away from me? What? So she's now trying to tell me I'm going from my original five days on, two days off, she moved me already to four days on, three days off. She's now telling me I'm gonna be doing three days on and four days off. I'm like, where do you get off? What is happening? I can't breathe. I'm literally having a panic attack. They can't see it on my face, but inside I am literally, my blood is boiling because I'm like, whoa, whoa. What are you talking about? What do you mean? So you're taking Fridays and Saturdays. You don't get to come in here and dictate and take over and tell me that I'm only gonna be working three days a week when you have a salary what do you need the two days for what do you need one day I flexed on I was like fine take the one day here damn you know what I mean like I gave it to her take it whatever have the one day why are you coming to me after we've adjusted the schedule you know why are you coming to me now and telling me you're gonna be taking two days now for what you don't have a job. You're getting paid to stay home. Why are you trying to infiltrate and take another workday away from me? Do you want me to be broke? Because that's what it's giving. When she said she's gonna be taking in Fridays and Saturdays, because she's not asking, she's literally telling me. She started off her sentence with so, and she finished with Saturday. So I'm going to be taking Fridays and Saturdays. And I was like, no you're not. Literally, that was what I said, I said no you're not. No ma'am, no ma'am. Said I already flexed, I gave you the one day, I don't see why you need to. You actually told us that you're not allowed to work because of the reasons you're off of work. The reason that they gave you the leave means you're not supposed to be work because you're not working due to stress. And she tr basically tried to tell us that she found a loophole around it and so she's going to be working the Fridays and the Saturdays. I said, no the hell you're not. Now you know the basement is cold. Okay, my basement is very cold because of the AC. But baby, it was hot down there that day because of the temperatures coming off of my body. It was hot, okay? <sighs> it's getting hot in here. At this point, as you can imagine, I am fuming. But, like in the last video, there's more to come. And the second gaslight that was on the way was about to set my pussy hairs on fire, okay? So we're in the basement. You know what? It's not ironic that we were in the basement because hell, okay, hell, down below, yeah, that's where we were. I'm connecting the dots now. <laughs> We were having the meetings in the basement because the basement represented hell. Oh my God. So we're sitting in the basement and she says to me, well, if I'm paying half of the rent, why aren't I getting half of the time? Are you guys hearing what? What? She was referencing my mom's time, girl. When I say I was gagged, gagged, I was like grasping for straws. I was stuttering. I was like, hmm, what, what? Why is rent being discussed right now? What are we talking about? So, pretty much when we decided to move, and by we, I mean myself, my ex, and my mom, when we decided to move, because we were moving to a bigger place, and I'm usually paying my mom her money to watch my kids and help me out however she can, my mom told me to absorb it in the rent. 
So the bills, the rent, even the car, because my mom has access to the car, the groceries, like all those things pretty much are coming out of our pockets or my pockets. And um, so my mom was saying, since I'm gonna be living there, pretty much just take care of that stuff. And you know, throw me a bone when you can. If you can't, no big deal, whatever. And that was an arrangement between me and my mom, but it was only supposed to be temporary because I was struggling a bit with YouTube and it wasn't giving what it used to give, girl, at all. Okay, there was a serious change in income. And so when we moved, my mom was just like, yeah, just absorb it, like it's not a big deal because I love what I do and I love my grandbabies. So pretty much she was like, just take care of me and I'll take care of you. And that's the agreement that we had. Since my sister was privy to that information and I don't even remember how she got the information. Since she was privy to that information, she devised this plan to use it against me and my mom. When she offered to pay half of the rent, this was why. She knew that she would be able to bring it up later and say, well, I'm paying half the rent now, so I get half the nanny. My mom was an object. And if she could cut my mom down the middle and keep her half and give me my half, that's what she would do. Um, it's messed up, but that's what she would do. Now, obviously, we didn't know that my mom was gonna have trouble watching the kids, like I said, all five kids, but because my sister's children are nonverbal, or were nonverbal at the time, and had different needs than my kids, it made it too difficult for my mom to manage them. Keep in mind, my sister had promised my mom that she was going to have somebody come in multiple times a week from the Autism Canada Support Program, and that person would help her and give her the tools that she needs to be able to manage my sister's son. That was of course all talk. Never happened, it was never gonna happen. So, at this point, my sister is talking a big game. She is really pushing the envelope. She's like, listen, I'm paying half the rent, I want half your mama, <laughs> and I'm gonna get it. You're not gonna stop me. <laughs> <laughs> the gag was my mom was pretty much in agreement and I was like mom please like what are you saying what are you saying she's a stay-at-home mom that's getting paid regardless why is nobody listening why is nobody hearing this she does not need the help she has the benefit of living here so if she needs something like if she needs to go to the store or something it's not a big deal for anybody in the house including myself to watch her kids or whatever if she needs to go somewhere do something that's different but to be doing it every single week unnecessarily makes no sense I pretty much felt like I was watching a horror movie and my mom was the main character and I'm yelling at my TV and the person on the other side of the screen cannot hear me like that's how it felt and only coming out of it did my mom did it register for her like and I'm like how were you so blind like the covert narcissism was real that being said I said listen I am not flexing on the Saturday I'm not flexing so try it with somebody else because it's not gonna be me it's really not gonna be me I was again putting up some serious resistance because I didn't agree to none of this crap okay I didn't tell her she had to pay half the rent it's different if I said hey you gotta pay half the rent and she said well am I gonna get half the child care Remember, she was the one that only wanted to pay $200 to my mom. So when my mom wasn't feeling that, um, this was her opportunity to try to get it in for free 99 because you need somewhere to live. I don't know why you're looking at whatever situation I got going on with my mama, especially because, because my sister said she was moving in again, I decided that I would pay my mom out of pocket again. Because my sister decided she was gonna uh, be paying half, I was like, okay, well, great. Then I'll start paying mom again, it makes more sense. When I said that, my sister was trying to get to know how much I was gonna be paying mom because she wanted to be able to match it so that she could make sure that she's getting half the time. I was like, I'm not telling you how much I'm paying. Don't worry about how much I'm paying. And so she was going to my mom and also asking, hey, how much is Bougie gonna be paying you um, because I wanna match it? Or she would try to say that she wants to like do the same amount as me, but our children's needs were completely different. You have two autistic children that have a lot of other needs that my kids didn't need. So it was like, you can't even pay her. Go! 
Now, I don't even know what I was saying. I was saying that, she, oh yeah, she was trying to match the money. So she was trying to match whatever I was gonna pay, but she couldn't. So that was that on that. Um, and it never ended up happening, which I'll get into later because she had my mama mess all the way up. Anyway, even though I said I was not going to flex, I was like, okay, the only way this is going to work because I was being difficult, she was being difficult, and I said the only way this is gonna work is if we split the Saturday in half, where she takes the morning until like one o'clock, and then I get from one until five. But automatically, it was an SHIT show, it didn't work, like they were rushing in the mornings till one, and then they weren't even getting home on time from doing whatever they were doing, because she would pretty much pack up her kids and my mom in the car on the Saturday and take them out of the house so that one my kids wouldn't have access to my mom at all so instead of leaving her kids home with my mom to mind she would take my mom out of the house to make sure that my kids and her kids were not getting access to my mom even if I was home as well and helping my mom with her kids do you get it probably not but that's what was happening so I sitting in the basement on the couch. My mind is going a million and three thoughts a minute. My heart is racing. I'm feeling a lot of things. And I'm like, how the hell did I get myself in this big mess? Okay, it was giving Lunette the clown. I'm like, what happened? And I know it seems trivial, but like, how would you feel if you allowed somebody to move into your home and they slowly started to take away your job, your income, your livelihood when you have three babies, three mouths to feed, and you kind of just felt hopeless like and helpless. Like, what the hell? I literally felt like I was in danger. After that mess of a conversation concluded, I pulled my mom to the side. I told my mom that I am feeling extreme regret and that if I had ever known ahead of time that my work life would be affected by my sister moving in, I would have never extended the invite. I didn't think it was right that my livelihood was being affected and my sister out of her mouth said to me She's not empathetic towards me um, Because when she needed help when she lived a million miles away She wasn't able to get it shut the fuck up to me that ain't had nothing to do with me because it's not my fault You tried to offer somebody 200 damn dollars to be a living nanny <laughs> And you were giving your man $400 every two weeks for some ganja That wasn't my fault that she didn't have the help So when she's saying she's she doesn't feel any empathy towards me not being able to work I'm like, okay, well, that's really not something you say to Someone that allowed you to move into their home But she didn't regard it as that so that's neither here nor there Point, my mama still don't really see what the hell I'm talking about. She's not seeing it, hearing it, and I'm like, what kind of demonic, witchy trance does my sister have over my mom right now? Like, how is she not seeing the issue in me losing income? She just thought I was being unreasonable. My mom literally thought I was being unreasonable, and I'm like confused because I gave up the one day already. You know, I know I was being difficult at first and not trying to give it up, but I gave it up, and I didn't make any complaints about it you know after the first meeting I was like fine you know I'll try the four days a week if it affects my income we gonna have to have another meeting miss ma'am okay so I was chilling and cool with the four days thing but now to be three days how the hell am I off more days than I'm on please please tell me please tell me anyway the Saturday split shift unsuccessful it was not good it wasn't giving I I ended up just giving up the Saturday. I was of course sad by this because I felt like I was losing. I felt like I was being infiltrated on. I felt like things were out of my control and I was tired and I couldn't fathom how I got from five days a week to now three days a week working, but um, I really just didn't feel like I had a lot of say in the matter. No matter how I tried to put my foot down, it wasn't giving. So like I was stuck and I wasn't sure how I was gonna get unstuck but I pretty much had the attitude of it is what it is. I think the thing that got me the most, like when I was experiencing this, was that I was dealing with my income and my sister drama 
the same time that I'm dealing with my ex-husband and his foolishness and every single day I would just put on a brave face and go on about my day as if I was unbothered. But I wasn't unbothered. I was very bothered, okay? <laughs> but I'm never gonna let a hoe see me sweat, period. <laughs> I was not being like mean or standoffish to my sister when all this is happening. I didn't feel the need to, that's not my MO. So like, even though I'm not happy about only working three days a week, I just took it on the chin because I didn't have the energy, you know? I literally just didn't have the energy. I felt tricked, you know? I felt bamboozled, manipulated, all those things, but I wasn't going to let that get me down in a sense. I was just going to keep it pushing. The worst part about it, of course, is that it didn't end there. That's not where the story ends. Um, it continued to get worse. I was going crazy. I was. As I reflected, like I said in the beginning of the video, as I was reflecting um, before organizing all my notes for this story, um, it made me cry and it hurt me deeply because I felt so alone. I felt unheard. I felt like a child almost. It was just a lot to be dealing with simultaneously, like a lot to be dealing with all at once and I was not here for it at all. Now, as you must imagine, I am exhausted with this story. Um, not necessarily telling you guys the story, but like reliving these things is exhausting. So there are a lot of things that I forget to mention or leave out because when you deal with something traumatic, you tend to block, right? So that's what's happening. So there's a few things that I wanted to just throw in here that happened that I wanted to shed light on. My kids were obsessed with their auntie, rightfully so, but it was like she didn't like them. And it was weird to me because they loved her so much. And my kids are intense, I get it. I don't be liking kids, people's kids either, but like not my nieces and my nephews. <laughs> She didn't like them. For example, if I was taking my kids outside to jump in the trampoline, I would call her and tell her to send her kids down so that they could go on the trampoline as well. And she would always either make an excuse as to why they can't come or no, they're having quiet time or some BS, right? She would say no. And so I'd be inviting her kids to come play outside in the backyard. Like we spent $1,600 on this trampoline. Somebody gonna jump, okay? Somebody is going to jump. And so she would make an excuse and say like, no, they need to be staying upstairs for whatever reason. But if you listen, you would hear the kids trying to bust out of the room. To freedom! They were shaking the doorknob because she had, we have children's locks on the doorknob. There's like these things that you fold down and fold back up. And they would be the whole damn day trying to get out the damn room. My sister has them locked up in the damn room. They want to get out. So I'm like, hey, send them down. Let them come jump in the trampoline. No, she don't want to do that. Wait. So I would invite them, she would say no, fine, whatever. Then when she would be going outside with her kids to jump in the trampoline or go for what, anything, and my kids wanted to go, she be sat there asking me if I am coming. And I'm like, you can't bring them outside in the backyard. The thing about it was her children run into the street. And so she's always having to chase after them. But my kids didn't do that. They were more of a help to her outside because they can help her, you know, wrangle the kids back in closer since there is no fence. She never wanted to take them outside if I wasn't with her or if my mom wasn't there, like she didn't want to have to mind them. And I'm just like, what the hell? And she'd literally be asking me if I'm coming out when I'm sat there working or if I'm nursing the baby. Like I'm gonna come outside in the blazing hot sun and nurse the baby and she's a newborn. Like what? Like outside? Take the kids outside and shut up. Like this is too much. <laughs> And another thing she would do, like I just said, was lock herself and the kids in the room upstairs. It was almost like that she didn't want them to interact with my kids and she didn't want to interact. And I didn't. it didn't make sense because before her man left, it was the interactions her kids were having with my kids that helped her kids develop. And so when she would lock them in the room, they would regress a bit because they weren't being exposed to other kids and doing kid things with other children. She just had them cooped up in there and were like, what is 
going on? Um, the same thing happened with like eating at the table. Her son never used to sit down at the table to eat when he first arrived and we finally got him doing it and then she started allowing him to eat upstairs. Girl, the amount of patty crumbs and just all kinds of food smeared upstairs do the most which it's always been a rule up in this house ain't no food upstairs like my kids cannot have food in their room okay every once in a while they get a cheese string but they're not having food upstairs nothing with crumbs because i ain't about to vacuum it up and i'm not gonna get the carpet a mess like it's not happening so no food upstairs was a rule that was not being respected obviously my kids wanted to play with their cousins and their cousins wanted to play with them but my sister was blocking that from happening and i didn't understand it and my mom didn't understand it either me and my mom kept looking at each other crazy because we're like why are they not coming to play like mm -mm. on top of that on Fridays and Saturdays which were now her days this was really problematic for me Fridays and Saturdays when my mom would be watching her kids uh, if she was watching the kids in the room adjacent to my sister's room my kids were not allowed in uh, they were not allowed to interact. Keep in mind, my mom has been with my kids since they were born and they love their grandma, my mom loves them. But my mom kept telling me like on her days, my sister did not want my kids with them. And my mom was upset by it, but she was just like, it is what it is. She has an issue with them coming in the room, you know. She just wanted to make sure that she's having my mom's help to herself and just her kids. And she'd be like, it's my day. Why are the kids with you? Like, she is a grandma. <laughs> what are you asking? And I was like baffled because if it was my day, I didn't have an issue with her kids being down playing in the basement with my mom and and my children so when she's telling me this I said no she's not wrapped too tight because they're your nieces why can't they be interacting with grandma and your children just because it's your day like what is your day like shut up like I just can't like this is real life this was really what was happening in my house okay my house oh so another thing that was happening was she would go behind my back to my mom and like compare us. And so she would be like, that I don't knock on her door. I don't knock on my mom's door. I just bust in there like the Kool-Aid man. Cause yeah, <laughs> that's the kind of like, that's the kind of comfort level I have with my mom. My mom don't really knock on my door. Well, when I had a man, she would knock, but like she don't knock now for what? We don't knock. It's we teach the kids to knock, but like I don't knock on my mom's door. She knows who who's at her door, and that's how she knows too. So my sister would always be like knocking on her door, being a proper. I'm gonna knock on mommy's door. Mommy, let me in, darling. Really? Knocking? You're concerned about me knocking or not knocking? I knock something, okay? Like I am so annoyed. <laughs> knocking you are that's how petty you are you're telling her i knock and she doesn't knock why are you noticing that why are you watching me that hard that you know that i don't knock on my mother's door i ain't not if a girl i don't need to knock on my mom's door ain't no man in there like that's how close we are we don't need to knock my mom had a key when we did not live together my mom had a key to my house i had a key to her house i won't go knock <laughs> She really went to my mom and said that, comparing us, pretty much saying like, why don't you like me more? Cause I knock and she doesn't knock. And the gag is too, that I was sat there clueless. I had no idea and this was going on. My mom did not tell me that these things were going on until after the situation ended. And she's telling me this stuff and she would be like, saying to my sister like, why does that concern you? Like, why is that bothersome to you? Like, that's okay. If it doesn't bother me, then why is it bothering you? She doesn't knock, okay? The last thing I'm going to shed on before I continue telling you guys what was going on was a conversation my sister went to my mom about a bold face lied. So before this lie happened, there was an incident what that happened with the notes. So in the notes, um, my sister had gone to the store a few times and instead of totaling the numbers, she did like pluses and minuses and I didn't, I didn't understand it properly, so I thought that she was subtracting something when she wasn't. And 
and I subtracted $77 because that's what I thought I was supposed to subtract $77 from it and sent her the money I was supposed to send her and then changed the notes when she got home that day or she called me from the parking lot of whatever store she was at and she's like why did you change the note and I'm like because I just paid you you know so I changed it because there was like a it was whatever I changed it it was $77 all I did was remove $77 from it because she owed me and I owed her so I was just basically taking what um, she owed me subtracting it from blah blah it was complicated okay either which way it was $77 that I subtracted that's all I did I subtracted the $77 and I changed the note to minus $77 or whatever the amount was if it was 127 I just subtracted 77 and put the remaining was so she calls me from the store she's all like frustrated because I adjusted the note and I'm like oh it's fine just add the $77 back she starts going on and on about how it wasn't just $77 and I'm like it literally was all I did was subtract 77 like why would I do more and she's like no so then she's going goes into her phone or yeah her phone app her like banking app and ta and adds up all the time she went to the grocery store for the month and says this is how much she spent for the month and I'm like but that's not the amount that was there before and so basically she like forgot to put stuff on it was a bull okay it's a bull okay so at that point I was like okay let's not do the grocery thing anymore I don't want to do that because apparently it's messy so I was like I don't Want to split groceries anymore down the line we did end up going back into the grocery slitting but like that first situation happened that was really early on and i was like what the hell is wrong with this girl i said why would i take off more than i was supposed to or anything like that like for what it's literally right there in the open all i did was subtract the 77 dollars just add it back to the total what's the problem so me and her got into an altercation about that early on anyway we moved past that apparently <laughs> we moved past that and it got worse fast forward uh uh, she has this conversation with my mom where she's telling her bold face lies. So she makes up some bull shite about us going grocery shopping and me not paying her back on time. There was never a pay schedule and if you remember when I was doing her nails in my office, we were talking about hounding people for money and like if I know you got it and you know I got it, why would we hound each other and all these things, blah, 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 blah. There was no pay schedule. She started to say that when she's going to the grocery store, if she has to go to the grocery store and I haven't paid her back yet, she doesn't have enough money, which made no sense because she was over here popping hot S-H-I-T like she got the big bag. We're talking about 50 and 100 dollars. Why don't you have enough money to go back to the grocery store before I pay you? And also, why are you not coming to me and saying, hey, can you pay me? Because I don't have enough money. She couldn't come to me because she was fronting in my damn office like she had a big bag. Like she didn't need me to pay her back the same day that I go to the grocery store or the same day that she goes to the grocery store. So she couldn't come to me. So she's going behind my back and she's telling my mom this and my mom is looking at her sideways because for the last five years, my mom has seen how I manage money and money's never been an issue, period. So she looking at her like, why don't you, she didn't even look at her. She said, why don't you go and talk to her? Like, I don't get why you're telling me this. And she's like trying to say that if she comes to me, it's just gonna go in a circle and all these things. And my mom's like, okay. Uh, and she left it alone. But my mom knew something was wrong because it just didn't make any sense. What did I tell y'all? Roof over my head, lights on, okay, bills, food is last on the list but like we gotta eat I got three kids I'm not I'm not about to play with the grocery bill like what <laughs> so she's over there lying to my mom and telling my mom I'm not paying her back on time and I'm like when my mom tells me this one I'm like you are you kidding me I was shaking I'm like are you kidding me on time and so I tell my mom about the conversation that me and my sister had in the office I'm like that's why she's not coming to me because she can't she can't come to me and tell me that uh, she needs me to pay her back because she doesn't have the money to go to the grocery store the second time. Pretty much trying to make an excuse as to why she's using the credit card so damn much. No, baby. No, no. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> No. So yeah, she's telling mom this and mom is like one and one is not equaling two. It's giving one and one. It's giving everything under the sun except for one, two, except for two. <laughs> 
it's not giving two. So uh, my mom is looking at her sideways because she already knows that doesn't sound like me. Like I'm not paying her back on time. On time. Baby, don't ever. Baby, I worked in collections. Don't ever. Okay, don't ever. There was no pay schedule. And we're not gonna pretend there was, because there wasn't. <laughs> when I tell my mom that there was no pay schedule, she said, wow. She was like, wow. We were uh, both stunned. Because why are you going to these lengths? She w Basically, she tried to go to my mom and paint this horrible picture of me. But my mom had been here for the last five years. So she knows me, knows me, knows me, you know? And and there's nothing that anybody can say to my mom about me and my mom is going to take it and be like she did that because she knows me okay uh, very well and so there was this incident where I'm working and we needed to go to Costco and my sister was supposed to go and this is around the same time as the money situation I think it actually happened before so my sister's supposed to go to Costco and she doesn't go and she tries to make the excuse that her kids are clean to her that day and she's all sad in the room and I'm like oh okay just tomorrow you know she's like yeah well, I'll, I'll go tomorrow next day come she don't go I said what the hell going on she's using the kids again as a scapegoat saying the kids are clinging to her and I'm like the kids don't cling to her the minute she leaves they'll fuss for five minutes like any other kids and then go about their day they, they they're not clinging to her she makes it the excuse again that she can't go and then she said she'll go the next day no she didn't go the next day and so at that that point when three days go and she's like using the excuse three days in a row I'm like go to my mom like she's not going my mom's like maybe she's having financial issues <laughs> I said no. This is so. This is all before this. The last. Car, the last thing I just told you. She's. I was like financial issues. Uh. Uh. No. It's not giving that. She got money. She got money. I thought she had money. She ain't got no money. <laughs> so I'm like financial issues. Nah. No. And and my mom said, well, why wouldn't she be going? I said, I don't know. Why wouldn't she be going? But I. I was like, I don't think it's that. It was that. Pretty much she tried to, she used the excuse until it was my day off and then I ended up going to Costco. And what she did was, after I went to Costco and I added the things to the list, she calls me into her room for a meeting. So we go, and so I go into her room and I knew it was coming because something was wrong. And she tells me, so I wanna change the way that we're doing like grocery and stuff cause I'm only getting paid once a month now and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, mom was right, she's having financial issues. So pretty much her well was running dry and she didn't want to do the groceries the same way we were doing them. She's like pretty much saying like, you know, certain items she'll come in half on, but other things that she, she won't bother with and yada, yada, yada. And so I was cool with that because they was buying a whole lot of bacon. I don't be eating no damn pork, okay? And the bacon is expensive. It's one of the most expensive things on our, our shopping list. I wasn't feeling that or whatever, but like I wasn't gonna be petty and picky about it. It is what it is. Cause sometimes my kids like the bacon and they eat it too. So it is what it is, food. Everybody gotta eat. So I'm not about to nitpick about what's on the grocery list. And I didn't need to, cause it ain't chicken if you got it. But she didn't have it and she was trying to trick. <laughs> Girl, I can't, my sister is tired. Like she is so tired, tired. So all this stuff is happening. The stuff that was happening like behind my back, my mom held it down. Like she was actually really good at holding it down. She hated being in the middle, but I didn't know. My mom kept saying this comment, like she's like, it's not the kids, it's the adults in the situation. It's the adults in the situation. And every time she said it, I would be confused because I'm like, mom, I didn't gave up my work. I've been going or I've not been complaining. I, I made myself smaller up in my own house. What do you keep saying it's the, it's the adults in the situation? Because I had no idea my sister was going behind my back and saying stuff and my mom has to not say anything because she doesn't want to create any issues. She doesn't want to make a further divide or anything like that. But I literally had no problem with my sister. So I'm confused because she had a problem with me and my children so but I didn't know you know so I'm confused when my mom kept saying this comment it's the adults in the situation and I'm like what, what more do you do want, you from, want me? from me what more can I do I didn't give up my work 
Like, I didn't make a big deal out of it. After, once I gave it up, I gave it up. I didn't be humbugging around the house, folding up my arms and kissing my teeth and rolling my eyes when I see my sister. I'm just trying to hang out with my sister. We were trying to, I was trying to watch RuPaul's Drag Race with her. Like, I'm trying to hang out with her and stuff. Like, not caring about none of this stuff because it was petty to me and as long as I didn't make like a drastically less than I was already making I didn't care anyway as you can see a lot was going on and it was causing extreme stress to not only me but to my mom you know what to my kids my kids were stressed one other thing that she was doing a lot and we caught on real quick was using her mental health as a crutch and also using therapy and her mental health as a weapon. Very scary stuff, very scary stuff. We didn't realize it at first because it was new to us, you know, that level of mental health issues. Uh, it was very new to us, but as time went on, we realized that it would only come out and be used to her advantage when my mom would be like pressing her about money and it would happen unbeknownst to me. So I didn't know my mom was pressing her about money that was owed, but I would see my sister was heavy, like her spirit was heavy in the house and like just depressing and dark and like, ooh, girl, I couldn't deal, child. Cause uh-uh, you are not about to bring that around me. Uh-uh, before it jump off me. I said, I was scared, girl. I was frightened. <laughs> rebuke you I was not having it like mm -mm. but she would be moping around and mm -mm. I'd be like oh morning like how was you? did you sleep good she's like mm -mm. okay and then we just had to stay away from her for the rest of the day girl because she would just bring the mood down the other part is too girl is always the other part the other part the, another one thank you <laughs> Um, she wasn't helping with no damn housework, okay? The queen of Amazon packages, boxes, stuff from every store in the world. She's ordering so much stuff and there's creating so much recycling and she's not breaking down the boxes. And my mom kept telling her, listen, you need to break down these boxes. I am too old. To, it, you better break down these damn boxes. And she would just come chuck the box in the garage and me and my mom are breaking down boxes that I didn't spend my money on. No, you better do your own damn recycling. You is grown. Okay, she thought she had a maid. No. So uh, the recycling would be full. Nobody's taking out recycling except for me or my mom. Not okay. Anyway, so we're telling her, you need to make sure you break down your boxes or stop ordering stuff. Like, girl, I can't. Her kids would throw food. She would never pick up a broom to sweep up and her kids always threw food. And she wasn't picking up a broom to sweep up the damn floor not one time, okay? She just tap pass it and think that she's just gonna go about her merry way and somebody's gonna clean up after her kids. Help us! <laughs> Like you think just because you're paying your little measly half of the rent that you don't have to sweep up after your children? Girl, the job is hard enough as it is. Let's not make it harder for our mother. So yeah, there was just lots of those little issues. If I were to sit here and list things off all day, girl, we would be here for an eternity. So I'm not gonna sit here and keep listing off. You guys are getting the gist of what the frig was going on, okay? Weirdo behavior. Straight up weirdo behavior. Anyway, I'm down to three days a week on and four days off what a life you know most people probably want that I don't I don't I don't that's not what I want it's not giving that okay it really wasn't I thought it was a little bit ridiculous now I didn't like it I didn't I didn't like this work schedule but I adjusted to it because I didn't have a choice and so for whatever reason the added stress from my sister and her family moving in it started to weigh on my mom and I felt like she was losing patience with me, with my kids. It was actually creating a problem um, for us and I felt really bad for my kids. I felt bad for myself, but I didn't like it and it was making me uncomfortable because I felt like my mom didn't feel like she wanted to help me anymore. I obviously had to step in. And it was also dealing with Chucky, my mom and Chucky, ooh, them two. Um, my mom just was feeling really stressed out, underappreciated, unappreciated, not even underappreciated, unappreciated, period. 
and just like she was over it. And I didn't blame her, girl. I, I definitely was not blaming her. I was sad because like I opened my home to my sister and had I never done that, you know, it really was giving Pandora's box. Like if I never opened my home to my sister, all this crap would not have taken place. But it was too late at that point. It had already begun and whatever was gonna happen was gonna happen and I would have to live with it. Again, I, I, I wish I could just end it here and be like, and that's the story of, but that's not where it ended at all. I begin to pray and pray hard. I was praying hard, like, God, like, what is this? Like, what can I do? I am leaving it all on the altar, girl, okay? I am crying, I'm like, where is you? Where is you, God? I'm not feeling any of this. Speak to me, Lord, like, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm trying to pray my way out of this. I pray my way out of everything, okay? If I'm in trouble, I pray my way out, okay? That's all I know how to do, so that's what I was doing. God was listening. Between Chucky and Taz, I didn't have any fight left in me. I was ready to wave any white flag, girl. If it was off-white, cream, I was about to wave it. I didn't care what color it was at this point. Baby, give me a red flag, I'ma wave it. Like, whatever the flag is, I wanted to wave it. I was so done. So because I'm feeling this way, and I'm talking to God, we, God and I, me and God, us, make the executive decision that I am going to protect my children and be with them for the summer. I'm gonna take some time off to be mom of the year. You know, I'm gonna give them the best summer break. What, not summer break girl, they toddlers. <laughs> but I'm gonna give them a good old summer. I'm gonna I'm be way more present and just, you know, not throw myself at work and blah, blah, blah. So I decided that that's what I was gonna do. I had plans to finish out my final week of filming and then just take it easy for the rest of the summer. I decided to commit to one day a week for YouTube just so that I couldn't or wouldn't lose monetization because things are very different now and I am not trying to work my butt off to try to regain monetization if it were to get lost. Like no, that was, that was not gonna be a thing for me. I committed to one day a week. That meant that I went from now from five days to four days to three days to now one day a week. I was devastated, but I trusted God. I just knew that I couldn't do it anymore. I just could not keep fighting. I was mentally drained, exhausted, everything. Like I was over it, I, over it. So I said, I'ma just be a mom. <laughs> just be a mom at this point stay at home mom life like that's what it's giving so pretty much I had a conversation with God and I was like if you can guarantee me the same income I'm making right now with only working one day per week that will be perfect I will I will not complain Lord I won't fuss I was fully prepared to throw my hands up and let Taz get what she wanted, what I thought she wanted, what everybody thought she wanted, which was my mom's help full time. So I was pretty much quitting my job. So I tell my mom, hey, I'm taking the summer off. I'm gonna like, you know, let you guys do your thing. And she's like jumping for joy. She's like, hallelujah. Jesus. Praising God that I finally, I'm not resisting arrest. <laughs> I am, you know, waving the white flag. My mom is elated. She's like beyond happy. She's so excited. She's like, oh my God, like you have to tell your sister. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I didn't feel like it. I wasn't gonna tell my sister. I was just gonna let her tell her. I thought she should tell her, hey, uh, Bougie fired me for the summer. <laughs> you need me? You hiring? You know, that's what I thought my mom should do, but I actually did end up telling my sister in a group chat, hey, you know, I am uh, gonna take the summer off. I'm just gonna commit to one day a week, so, you know, enjoy the summer, you know, take whatever time you need, to blah, 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 all that good stuff. And she was acting all appreciative in the damn group chat, like, thanks, like, I appreciate that, wow, like, <laughs> Girl, do you know what this lady did? After I get done telling her, hey, I'm not gonna work this summer, you know? I don't really know when I'll be back. I don't know if I'm gonna come back in September, October, November, girl, December, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but like, I'm just gonna see how it goes. I'm just gonna take some time off and you know, the week is yours. After acting all sweet and appreciative in the group chat, she went to my mom immediately 
and was huffing and puffing. Baby, your cup has a hole in the bottom of it. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? How can you go and huff and puff? She went to my mom and said, well, what's gonna happen when September rolls around? She's just gonna take the days back. So like, what's the point? And da, da, da. Live in the now, girl. Live in the moment. You don't know what I'm gonna do when September rolls around. Why are you concerned about September? Girl, it is freaking May. What? At that point, my mom knew something was definitely wrong. She's like, are you serious? Are you okay? Who cares about September? What about right now? Girl, my mom was over her. But the thing about narcissism and narcissists is they can only pretend for so long. So like, despite all of that, God was pretty much about to reveal to my mom everything that I've been trying to say, pay attention to, hello, anybody out there? Like, he was about to reveal it to her. So it was good that my sister was like, well, she's just gonna take the days back. <laughs> Shut up. Like, <laughs> girl, get a grip. <laughs> Get a grip. Get you some Gorilla Glue and get a grip. What is wrong with you? Oh my God. So boom, I'm down to one day a week. One day a week of work. It's giving leisure. <laughs> Uh, being a mom is a full-time job, so don't ever get it twisted. Pam, pam, okay? It's one day a week. My monthly income, just as I requested to the big guy up there, doesn't change. I'm shocked. I'm like, oh, God got me, got me. Oh, okay, that's what we're doing. I loved it. I was like, my God is the best, period, okay? So I was chilling, minding my business, and thinking like, this is great, you know, no big deal. Well, one day I decide I'm gonna look for my mom. One day I go and look for my mom around the house. She's nowhere to be found, okay? And I'm like, where the hell is my mom? Like, my kids are inside. I think it might have been, was it on her day off? Don't know. But I'm looking for her because I want to talk to her about something or just see where she's at. Like, usually just check on her in the morning. And I don't find her in the house, so I go look in the garage. She sat there looking like damn Monique and Precious fuming. And I'm like, what the frig is wrong with this woman? What? Why is she so mad? Like, she won't like this 24 hours ago. What happened? So my mom has one hell of an attitude, okay? I'm like, whoa, what did I do wrong? Like, what's going on? She starts going on about how she needs to get out of here. AKA move out to like she's leaving. And I'm like, what happened in the last 24 hours that I am not privy to because where's this coming from? Why is she saying this to me? I'm confused and I'm like, huh? She's like, whatever you owe on my cards, pay it because I need to get out of here. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, actually, two things happened. One thing I'm forgetting. So one thing ha that happened, I didn't know about. But the other thing, the thing that triggered this um, upset actually was uh, me and my other sister and her were like having some wine in the basement. So not Taz. And we were talking, my mom was saying something about, I think Chucky and I had made a comment that my mom took wrong, which was that she's not the type of person that, that should live with anybody, which was true, because none of us are. Like, I could never have a roommate, an actual roommate, like somebody that's a stranger. Um, and so I had said that comment to her, and she took offense to it because she didn't understand. Like, she felt like I was telling her. I think, too, because I had already, like, um, pretty much stepped in and was like not letting her watch my kids for the summer like I think she just felt a little weird but I did say that I had said like she's not the type of person that should live with anybody but like I don't feel like I'm the type of person that should live with anybody I don't feel like my sister should live with anybody like we're definitely people that cannot do a roommate situation like it's not happening it's not happening so uh tried it with family it's not happening if i can't make it work with family i definitely can't make it with more no stranger so like that's all i meant by the comment because chucky was impossible that's neither here nor there um 
So she took offense to that comment and then I guess went into fight or flight mode. So she decided she's getting out of here. She don't want to live here. Uh, that was the thing that happened that I knew about. The thing that I didn't know about, well, I'm about to tell you. So she doesn't really want to talk. She's just really, really upset and pretty much is letting me know like she, she's trying to get out of here yesterday. Like she's ready to go. I'm ready to go. Okay, but her bags are packed. <laughs> she's out of here. She tells me she just needs her own place and her own space and that's it. I didn't know it at the time, but this was the day that my mom got the rudest awakening. So like God really be setting stuff in motion. So her taking my comment wrong ended up revealing to her stuff about my sister. This day in particular, since she went into fight or flight mode and decided she's getting out of here and wants to move out, she decides she's going to find a place and put her first and last on her credit card. She finally decided she's going to, you know, see what her balance is on her other card, the card that my sister uses. At this time, she sees that her credit card has been maxed for two months. Zero payment. Unacceptable! Two months, no payment? Oh girl, maxed? Uh-uh. I know you lying. I know you're lying. The balance on this card is much smaller than the card that I am authorized to use, but it's still significant enough. You're not making that much money in a month, and if you're spending that much money in a month, and that's not what your paycheck is giving, uh... Houston, we have a problem. And that's what was happening with my sister. She was spending more, way more than she was making, but she had the card maxed, didn't say nothing, and wasn't being confronted about it because my mom was doing some blind trust thing that she shouldn't have been doing. Now, before she had even checked the card, she had gone to my sister and pretty much told her the same thing, like she's planning on moving out. And since she told my sister she's moving out, my sister then tried to say, well, let's find a place together. First she take away my job. Now she about to take away my mama. Oh, girl. I don't know none of this is happening. I just know my mom wants to leave. I had no idea at the time that my sister says to my mom, well, let's find a place together. And so the topic of first and last obviously came up and my sister was pretty much saying, oh, well, like rent is due. It's gonna be, it's coming around the corner. So like, I, I, we can't just leave and blah, 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 blah. But she was making excuses. And because she was saying that, and my mom didn't want to wait around for her, that's how she ended up going to check her credit card statement to see how much money she has. Cause she ain't about to wait for my sister to figure it out, to get first and last, right? Not happening. So she goes to check her credit card statement and realizes she's in trouble. Keep in mind, if they did move out together, that would make it virtually impossible for me to work. I would actually just be a stay at home mom with zero income income because I couldn't work without my mom's help. Um, especially because I don't do like family vlogging and stuff like that. Like I literally couldn't work. So not only is she trying to make my mama move out with her and do whatever she wants to do over there, but she had already depleted my source of income and knows that I can't work if I don't have my mom to help me. And she's getting paid from the government. You see how wicked this is. She's still getting her full salary and is still trying to make my life hell. Jobless, broke, and nannyless. What? Anyway, my mom was looking at my sister crazy as well because all this talk about money that my sister kept doing and she kept talking about this ginormous tax return that she was getting and all this stuff so she, everybody's looking at her crazy now because it's like okay so how come all of a sudden you ain't got first and last but you just got this huge tax return and she was like on the phone with CRA every single day because they needed to revise and give her more money and all this stuff and she was really popping it and then with the supports that she gets for autism and all this stuff that she was talking about where's the money where is the money one no money like I can't I can't <laughs> at this point mom is realizing something in the water is stank something in the water is stank what is it what is it she ends up checking her credit card statement and when she saw that the credit card had been maxed for two months without any type of movement payments Nothing, baby girl. She marched up into my sister's room, busted open that door, and she asked my sister, what the F is this? What the F is this? Do you know what my sister said to her?